buttons are a fundamental part of any website. So in this video, we'll be checking out how to do custom animations, effects, and interactions using buttons inside of Editor X. Let's just jump straight into it. Here is the website we built in the last video. And just here on the left, we have the button we created. If we preview this design, we can see that this button already has an animation when you hover over it, turning the background purple. This actually comes native with most button elements. So when you go to the quick add menu and you select buttons, you have a number of examples here, which come with pre-made hover effects so that you get to customize them however you want. You can view these hover effects by going to the inspector menu heading over to design. And here you have a number of styling options for their regular design, as well as for their hover interaction, which in this case comes as a standard blue for most buttons, but you can change that to purple or whatever theme colors you choose. So this is the very first type of animation you can create based on the pre-existing components. The other types of animations that we could apply here is even applying different types of styling to, for example, the border, as well as changing the text color, making it orange. Now, when we preview it, we can see that it does look much worse, but it gives you an example of how you can customize the animation being applied to it. But let's undo all those unnecessary changes and have a look at some other options that we have with buttons as well. Another thing we can do is apply animations to them on their effect into the page. This basically means that now when you preview the page, it animates the button in and that animation is a once only. And now you still have the hover animation when you're using the button. Now, in some cases, this might not be enough. You might want to have your own custom animations for a button, which are outside of just changing the traditional hover or border radius or text color. This is where we move into the territory of creating our own button. Let's have a look at how we can do that. While we have the traditional buttons, which we've looked at here, there are some other buttons with their own types of hover effects, such as the gradient button, which for example, has gradient overlays, which can apply a different aesthetics to your design. But if none of these are really doing the trick, what you can do is create your own button by say, adding in a container. I like the container because it has grids in case you want to add icons in or anything like that. But we start off with this container here and we're going to quickly add in some text as well. So here I'll just place in some regular text and I'll call this something like a request for a beta, uh, request beta access. I think that's what it said before. With this button, I'm going to place it inside of the container, utilizing most of the width, but centering it and snapping it into position. I think I'm going to also make sure that this text is centered because for most buttons they are. And I'm also going to make sure that they're docked in the middle as well. So I'll select the docking on the right hand side, attaching it to all the corners that I can. Now we've got this button, what looks like a button anyway, but if we select the preview over here, we can see that nothing's really happening. There are no hover effects. There are no clickable options. You can just select the text. So the very first thing that we want to do is add a custom hover effect. In order to do this, we have an option here called interactions in our inspector menu. Here we can add a hover interaction. This has applied to the outside container, but not the text itself. And here we can select to add a custom interaction. This custom interaction immediately gives us options for a hover state as well as an initial state. So I'm going to select the hover state over here and I can select to change the background. For this case, I want to change the background to be darker. And I also want to select the text and for the text, I want it to be lighter. So I'm going to select the text color to be white here. We've now added a custom animation, very similar to what we had previously, but now we're in full control of how it works. The hover effect is working, but the button is still not clickable. So there's one more thing that we need to do. And this is to add our own custom modifications to make it clickable. Since it's just a container, we're going to have to unlock dev mode. Dev mode allows us to start adding in code of our own to allow for different interactions. As we've selected this box over here, you can see it's called hash box seven. This is the ID for the box. You can rename this here on the bottom, right? So we'll select this to be called the hero button. 
I'm going to select enter for that and we should see that it's been renamed here to container being hero button. We have a number of on click handlers and handlers in general here on the actual menu here at the bottom. I'm going to select the on click handler and I'm just going to select enter here to create a new function when it creates that button as a clickable event. We're also going to import a library hill here called Wix location from the Wix location library. There's a lot more libraries here in the reference for Velo, which you can check out, but this one is nice and simple and I think it'll do the trick for us here. With this library, we can add an interaction and this is what I want us to do now. I'm going to use this Wix location and then I'm going to provide a to function, which will pass in a string and this string will be the URL location. But for the location, we need to have a URL. To make things simple, I'm just going to put in Google for the time being, just so that we know that it's working properly, and I'll hit save on that. Now that we've got this animation, as well as this clickable event, when we go to preview the page, what we're going to have is a hover state, with the mouse turning into the little clickable thing. And when we right click, or if we select it, it will head to Google. Now right now, because of the fact that we're in preview mode, we can't see that. But what I'm going to do is select to apply a hash. And this hash, when we preview it, should take us to the top of the page, which it does. So we know that this interaction is working, which is perfect. Now this is a very basic button animation type. We can actually make it much more complex now that we have the baseline working. So what I'm going to do is show you what else you can do. Now we've got this container here called the hero button. And if I select to copy paste another one, we can see that this one is called box seven rather than hero button. But I'm going to use a combination of these two to create something more unique. I'm going to first remove the custom interaction that we created beforehand. And instead, I'm going to create a second button, which is slightly bigger and place this smaller button inside. Now we have something a little bit more unique, but right now we can't see it just yet. I'm going to change the background of this button here to have this orange color uh, that exists uh, below it. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show how, for example, two different types of containers can work together to create a new type of animation. Now here, instead of selecting the main container for the button, I'm going to select the container above it. I'm going to resize it a little bit here so that it feels like it's almost nested inside of the container, but it's overflowing just a little bit. Then I'm going to select to create a custom animation. We previously had one on this button here before, but we're going to remove that as well. And now we're going to create a completely unique one. For this completely unique one, we're going to select a custom animation and we're going to select the button below it. This time I want to move its positioning. On this right hand side, you have a couple of options, things like rotation, which I could set to 180 for the text, which makes it upside down. It's not exactly what I want, but you also have an option here for doing this skew and translate. I want to use the translate and I want to set it offset it by 30 pixels from the left as well as from the top. 30 actually might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to reduce this down to say 15 and what that'll do essentially is make our button look like it's moving to the top left. When we preview it now, we should be able to see that it does. It actually moves a little bit there to the top left. And this allows it to look like it's got a bit of a perspective shift. Of course, this is not just it. We can do a couple of other things here as well. If we select the container again and select the custom interaction, we can even select the text here to set it to bold. And we can actually set out the letter spacing to be a little bit increased. And maybe we'll even add an underline to it or something of that sort. So that overall, it looks like there's a few different interactions happening all at once. We could even change the rotation or the opacity of it, but I'd love to keep most of that the same. The only other thing I might do is set the opacity to say 95% so that we can see that it's overflowing just a little bit. Let's preview that now. And now you can see that there's a lot more life to this button. My animation and UI might not be the best, but it's really more a showcase of some of the types of different interactions that you can perform when you're creating buttons as well as animations for their hover states. 
you can continuously create additional containers inside of this container, or you can have a higher level container overall that creates its own unique animation. Like for example, right now we've got the entire hero section here, and we could even have a custom animation for this hero section where we make the background a little bit darker when you hover over it. Now, when we're hovering over this section, we can see that the entire section gets a little bit darker, very similar to the button itself, while the button itself is still animated as well. This is just a quick introduction to button designs, animations, and interactions. And you can really take this quite far, depending on what you're doing. If you do want to see more advanced versions of this, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.